The Cooler Master H500P case features two huge and distinctive 200mm RGB fans up front, a tinted tempered glass side panel window, and a vertical GPU mount. With room for 360 rads on the top and front, a tasteful PSU shroud, and helpful cable management covers in the back, the H500P will make your next build both easy and sexy, just like me. Click the link in the description for more. Excellent! Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to today's video. I'm gonna build a computer, but I don't have all the parts I need. Joe's gonna help me, uh, and we're at Fry's, because we need an AMD Threadripper 1900X to build our entry-level Threadripper system. Uh, let's go shopping, all right. It's an unexplored world of technology, Joe. Right. Computer parts are over there. <laughs> this camera zooms so smoothly. Guys, Fry's has obtained lead speak technology. D. What do you want? What do you want? 1800. I don't think it's listed here. I'm gonna have to ask the friendly salespeople. Hey, that wasn't too hard. Got my paperwork. Gonna pick it up up front. Meanwhile, Joe's looking for a USB card reader. What do we got? Uni Unirex. It's not unisex, it's Unirex. Right, I guess that'll get the job done. All right, I'm cutting off the fries trip because we could obviously spend way too much time in here just looking at all of the various things that we could impulse buy. Oh, there's a porn. Um, what? Oh, Joe found the porn section too. I think it's only softcore here though, so uh, we're gonna move on. All we have to do is navigate the, the the last impulse buy section in the checkout aisle. Oh, look at these look at these pans. Like a, a griddle. I could make I could make pancakes. Got it, Red Ripper. What was that? Steak or somebody, somebody running over things. All right, I don't know what to say because we're about to get run over, but success. Okay. It's like. Also, I, I, I also got one of Joe's USB 3 card readers because you can never have enough USB 3 SD card readers. So we've returned from our successful trip to Fry's. I've got the 1900X here on sale for $550, $50 off the MSRP of $600. And uh, you guys already might know some of the rest of the parts that I'm putting in this build, but just in case you don't, this is intended to be an entry-level Threadripper build. And by entry-level, I mean if you want to get into Threadripper, if you want an enthusiast class, high-end desktop computer, you've decided to go with AMD, you got to get Threadripper. This is the cheapest Threadripper CPU that you can buy. The parts that I'm pairing it with are not the cheapest basement-level crap that you can get to go along and build a functional computer. It's a little bit nicer than that, but it's still a bit more towards the budget than a full-fledged system. The idea being that if you were to build this system and get it parted out, you'd have a very powerful system right now, and you'd have a very nice upgrade path to upgrade your CPU to an 8-core or a, I'm sorry, upgrade to a 12-core or a 16-core, since this is the 8-core, and then potentially other upgrades in the future from AMD. We don't really know about that, but Apart from the 1900X processor, I of course have this motherboard from ASRock, the X399 Tai Chi, a very full featured motherboard and on the lower end of price bracket when it comes to uh, socket TR4, Threadripper 4 motherboards with the X399 chipset. It's still gonna cost you upwards of 300 bucks, about 330 to 340 as of the time of the making of this video, but that's still cheap, sort of, when it comes to Threadripper motherboards. Uh, apart from that, our case is gonna be the Fractal Design Mesh of Phi C, chosen for the fact that it's a very solid Fractal case, very well put together, well constructed, all the features that you want to fit the hardware that you want in here, and Mesh of Phi because it's got that full mesh front panel, plenty of airflow, since this is potentially gonna be a system that's a little bit more high powered, we wanna have lots of cooling available for it, so uh, I thought that this case would be a good choice. Let's talk power supply, memory, and storage. Our power supply is, uh, this is just an AMD box because I don't have the retail box for this power supply. It is the Corsair RM850i. And I have used this power supply just briefly, although it didn't uh, get too much use, but 850 watt power supply, which is more than enough for the hardware that's going into this system, as well as having expansion room in the future. Uh, the 850i means it's intelligent. You can connect it up to the motherboard and use the Corsair software to monitor some stuff in there as well. And of course, all of the modular cables. It's got all black cabling, so it should look pretty nice through the tempered glass window. For storage, or at least for an operating system SSD, you're probably gonna want more storage than just this, so I'd recommend uh, getting a one or two terabyte hard drive to go along with this, but 
about a 240 to 256 gig SSD you can have right now for about 80 to $85. So keep an eye out for something like that and I have links in the description to some of those. I'm using a Kingston HyperX Savage. This is a 240 gig SSD uh, and this is kind of in the same range as the others that would cost about that same price. Finally, for memory, my recommendation is a four by four gigabyte kit of DDR4 memory. And I recommend DDR4 3000 speed, if not 3200 speed. This kit is not exactly that. And actually the Corsair kit I was planning to use for this build, I realized I don't have, or it's actually in use in the system over there. So I'm gonna need to hit up Corsair for a replacement for that. So for the time being, I'm gonna use this G-Skill kit. Uh, it is DDR4 and it's a four by four gig kit. I believe this is rated at 2666, but I will most likely be swapping this out um, for the actual finish build because, and I haven't even mentioned this, but the finish build is gonna be available either via a, a donation auction or just an auction itself for a charity giveaway. More on that coming in the future though. I'm gonna be doing that with Kyle at the beginning of December. And now unboxings. This package arrived just in the past, I wanna say 24 hours, but I think it might've been 48 hours. Uh, this is directly from Nvidia. And if this is what I think it is, and I'm pretty sure it is what I think it is, um, I'm gonna keep talking here, installing, so I can actually pull it out of the box. Look, it's a GTX 1070 Ti. Now the graphics card that I originally chose in the original parts list for this build that I did at the beginning of this month, uh, I actually chose a GTX 1070. The GTX 1070, in my humble opinion, would be kind of your best bet right now when it comes to getting a reasonably priced price graphics card, which should be around the, say, $380 to $400 range, combined with something like a Threadripper uh, build, which is definitely not on the cheap side. Now, 1070 Ti is just launching, and this is gonna cost a bit more than a 1070. However, if you do have that extra 50, 60 bucks to spare, uh, the 1070 Ti should be a nice boost in performance over the GTX 1070, so for that purpose, and for this system's future use, I'm gonna be dropping in the 1070 Ti. This is just the standard Founders Edition, and I'm probably gonna be swapping this out with a uh, third-party design 1070 Ti for the actual finished system giveaway. But for the time being, this will get the system up and running, and also I get to, to unbox my 1070 Ti, so that's exciting. And our final mystery unboxing component to go into this build, sent over by our good friends at Enermax, and that is our cooler right there, which is the Liquitech OC TR4. Now, another budget option, if you were building an entry-level Threadripper system that I would probably recommend you go with is Noctua's air coolers. And they have a 120 millimeter version and a 140 millimeter version that can be had for about 60 to $80, depending on where you buy them and, and deals and all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason I recommend those is because you can get the Threadripper adapter you do get an adapter that comes with your Threadripper processor that will let you use an Acetech based closed loop CPU cooler and those have been available for quite some time for quite a few years. However, the contact plate on those Acetech coolers is a little bit smaller and even though it's enough to go over the four Ryzen dies that's in a Threadripper CPU, it's not the best when it comes to the actual amount of thermal dissipation that you get between the CPU and your CPU cooler. So for that purpose, and also because this is probably gonna end up being shipped, and it's a little bit more difficult to ship a computer with an air cooler, a tower style cooler in it, than it is with a all-in-one liquid cooler. So for that reason, I hit up Enermax, and they were kind enough to send over their new Lictec OC TR4 version, and this has a specifically designed block uh, that's much larger to make much better contact with the CPU itself, providing better uh, thermal heat dissipation and uh, it should work a little bit better than the alternative. So, those are all the parts. I think it's time to build now. Yes, it's time to build. We are now opening our 1900X. I really like how they put rip here for Threadripper. As a substantial packaging with Threadripper processors, it's kind of fun. Uh, in the base down at the bottom, you actually get your mounting little screwdriver, so hang on to that. Uh, that's also where that Acetech bracket adapter is, but um, we're not gonna be using that, so I'll keep that in the box for whoever happens to 
end up with this system. And then at the back, unlock the power with a twist like so. And then our Threadripper CPU comes out and now we can take our bracket like that and pop it off like that. And then we grip the top and bottom like this and that comes off. And then we have our carrier frame right there that slides out. And the processor stays in that frame. We're gonna leave it like so. This is actually made to be installed directly under the motherboard. And you can see just how actually large this CPU is. Here's our NMAX Liquitec Lic Lic cooler. Large block, uh, little pump block combo there. But there you can just look at the contact plate and um, I don't have a side by side here to show an Ace Tech version, but um, it's just much larger. And when you actually put it side by side there with the Ryzen processor, you can see that's gonna make a lot more contact. Much, much more contact. So we're gonna use plenty of thermal paste um, because that has also been shown by quite a few different people who have tested it. Uh, more thermal paste, better contact between the heat spreader on the CPU and our block on the CPU liquid cooler. It's gonna give us the best temperatures we can get for our 1900X. Now guys, I have an installation uh, video specifically on this, so check that out if you want to, but just so you know, it's labeled on here, open as 321, so we're just going to use our Torx uh, wrench that came with this to unscrew uh, three, and then two. Those actually weren't even threaded on there at all, so I think we're fine. And then one, and then this should pop open the actual sockets or the socket retention. It is spring-loaded, so it pops up like that. And then there's another piece underneath, and this is the actual carrier frame that our processor is going to slide down into. This has a little dummy plastic piece in there. And there's actually a couple little rails along each side that that slides up and down onto. So we're just going to slide that up and remove it. And then we'll take our processor and slide it down onto those rails like so. Drops all the way down in there and it kind of lines up with the bottom. There's a couple little notches it'll kind of slot into. And we just drop that back down, kind of snaps into place. Drop this lid down. Closing, you want to go the opposite way, one, two, and then three. So we'll start with one right up here. Make sure that that's threaded. I like getting that one threaded and then getting these threaded and then tightening them down. So uh, let's get number two threaded on there as well. Maybe. And sometimes these take a little bit of pressure to get going, although those weren't too bad. To finally close things off, uh, bear in mind that there's a specific amount of pressure that this uh, torque wrench is torqued to, so we can go until it uh, is pretty secure on there, and then it should give us a little snap once it's all the way tightened down. That was it. So this actually uh, spins and does a little snap on the center of it. Do that again with Number two, as you can see, I'm very, very coordinated today. And so here, as it's getting tight, it uh, does a little snap and that just means you've tightened it down enough. Number three, and we're good. So there's a top exhaust and a rear exhaust, and um, I've decided that there's only this one fan plug up here that's positioned. There's two down here, I can feed it down to, but since there's only two fans, neither of them are up against radiators or anything, I'm just going to use a, a splitter real quick so I can plug these both into this top left plug.
everything is coming together. Uh, I'm just lining up our Intermax cooler down here. Now, it would actually maybe look better this way, and the Intermax logo would be facing up, although there's lots of extra tubing. So we might, we might want to flip it. Would bring the tubing out here, but it's still going to be coming down. Like this is this graphics card is going to be right there. So I just feel like it'll it'll be fine. Like here, I'll put I'll put a twist tie or something to kind of hold it up right there. I'll be fine. Thermal paste. Yeah. We're gonna use lots of it, and we're gonna use the spread it around method. I got the thermal paste all spread out nice and even, then I got excited and went to just drop it on there, but uh, there's actually these four screws I have to put down there first. Don't worry about the thermal paste, as you can see it's nice and even on there so far, and uh, air bubbles are typically not much of a concern in this situation. The thermal paste, after it warms up, after the CPU is in use, will, uh, will get a little bit looser, a little bit more move a little bit more towards liquid state and it will fill in any gaps and everything, anything that might be in there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I must say that as this build came together, we kept commenting how, like, nice it was turning out. It's fairly compact. I mean, this is a full-size ATX case, but it's not that long. There's not a ton of drive space in there for expansion. However, you do have a couple drive bays at the bottom, and there's a couple more SSD mounts in there. So this does have some expandability options when it comes to storage. But what I haven't done yet, and I'm going to do, uh, that would be to actually turn the, the damn thing on. So power one. Power two, glorious. All right, so thankfully everything appears to work, uh, which is good because I didn't do an outside of the box test build with this hardware, but I was very confident in it, of course. And we're seeing also a very limited amount of RGB LEDs in this case. There is a tiny uh, accent that's on the motherboard itself from ASRock, and you can control that with the software. And there's an RGB header on there, so it could be added to this if you did want to go that route, of course. If you're building this as a workstation, then maybe you don't want it to be super bright and blingy. And for that reason, uh, we kind of liked it, how it was turning out, which is uh, pretty mellow for the most part when it comes to lighting at least. And also very compact and uh, just like everything kind of fit in there really nicely. Also, I will point out that our graphics card was just barely long enough to fit in here. So do bear that in mind if you're considering doing a front mounted radiator with fans on this. This is a slightly thicker radiator from Enermax. It's probably a little bit more towards uh, 30 uh, millimeters wide. Um, and then with the fans on there, we did have enough room, but uh, a longer graphics card might not fit in there. Beyond that, I routed the uh, tubing up north and I kind of zip tied it up there a little bit just so it would hold it up and out of the way. Uh, we got the Enermax logo on there. And that's facing right side up, which is nice as well. It does appear that you can remove that uh, panel off of the front of it and flip that if you did decide it, uh, to flip it 180 degrees if uh, routing that tubing would uh, be a little bit easier for you that way. And we're not really using much of the basement area down here, like I already mentioned. So there is some expandability options down there, uh, although the power supply did just barely fit in there. So uh, thankfully there's enough room for that. 
and enough room for all the hardware inside. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. This has been my entry level Threadripper build. And once again, this build is going to be going towards charity. We're actually still on the fence how we're gonna do the charity event, but it's either gonna be, we're each gonna auction off a computer, this one for me, and then one that Kyle's gonna build, and then the, the, all that money will go to charity, or we're gonna accept donations, and then like a small dollar amount, like five bucks to, of a donation, will enter you in a drawing to win the systems. We're still figuring that out. So if you guys have any uh, feedback for us and how you think that little giveaway thing would be best run, leave that in the comment section down below. All the links to the parts I'm using in this system are also linked in the video description down below. Uh, so check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you next time.